the question was which relation is correct is correct for for n2 gas okay for n2 gas the first one is cp minus cv is equals to 14r cp minus cv is equals to 28r cp minus cv r by 14 cp minus cv is r by 28 which one is correct anyone anyone is getting the answer acha someone is getting 2 3 4 all three options i am getting okay theek hai see what happens here in some book what they do they will write cp as molar heat capacity and cp as specific heat capacity cp as molar and cp as specific here in this question it is not mentioned that cp and cv are molar heat capacity or specific heat capacity it is not mentioned in the question if it is molar heat capacity then then simply the answer would be cp minus cv is equals to r no matter what gas we have okay so usually what happens listen to me carefully molar heat capacity will write down with capital c this is a capital c so it is capital c molar heat capacity and the smaller one when c is smaller it is specific heat capacity so since in the question cp minus cv is equals to r is not given this is molar heat capacity at constant volume and constant pressure so since cp minus cv is equals to r is not given in the option that only means that this cp and cv are specific heat capacity it is not molar heat capacity one thing is that now what is the relation of specific heat capacity and mol and molar heat capacity that is what you need to understand so you tell me this capital c is the molar heat capacity 
and a small c is the specific heat capacity this is the specific heat capacity it is defined for 1 gram 1 gram it is a molar heat capacity defined for 1 mole so 1 mole we have how many gram the molecular mass of the gas yes or no molecular mass of the gas 1 mole respond guys quickly 1 mole means molecular mass of the gas isn't it right so this cp the capital one the molar one is the molar heat capacity of the mass which is equals to the molecular mass of the gas that is suppose we have nitrogen so this is the molar heat capacity of 28 gram of nitrogen can we say that yes or no clr you can type in cp is the molar heat ha huh, fine ignore this okay ignore this cp is the molar heat capacity for 28 gram of nitrogen gas fine right so for 1 gram we have cp that is a specific heat capacity so if you multiply this with the molecular mass of the gas m of the gas would it be equals to the molar heat of capacity can we say that how many of you understood this tell me this relation did you understand molar heat capacity is equals to the molecular mass of the gas into a specific heat capacity clear similarly can we write down this for can we write down this for the constant volume molar heat capacity at constant volume cv is equals to the molecular mass of the gas into cv so capital one is molar smaller one is specific correct now we know this relation small cp minus a small cv is equals to r we have that correct so we'll just substitute in terms of uh, you know sorry this minus this equals to r i'll write down so what is given in the question you see in the question we need to find out the expression of specific heat capacity and we know the capital one the capital cp minus capital CV is equals to, we have R, capital CP is molecular mass of the gas into CP minus CV is equals to R. So what we can write, CP minus CV is, is equals to R divided by the molecular mass of the gas. How many of you understood this? Tell me. This is the formula you can assume, you can memorize. Correct? So answer for this question would be what? R divided by 28 option D is correct over here. Option D is correct. This formula you must keep in mind. This formula you must keep in mind. You already know this CP minus CV is equals to R. Then you can substitute this and you will get the answer. Okay. Now you see another thing. We were looking at the formula of CP and CV relation also we have seen. You see this CV we have a formula is equals to F by 2 into R. F is the degree of freedom. F is the degree of freedom. Have you heard about it? Degree of freedom. Have you heard about it? No.
नो अच्छा ओके इट इज नॉट द पोर्शन ऑफ केमिस्ट्री इट इज देयर इन फिजिक्स यू विल स्टडी द ओवर देयर इफ यू वांट आई कैन डिस्कस दिस ओके हाउ टू फाइंड आउट बट इन फिजिक्स इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी व्हाट इंफॉर्मेशन यू नीड टू नो दैट फॉर डिफरेंट एटॉमिसिटी ऑफ गैसेस व्हाट वुड बी द डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम आई राइट डाउन हियर यू जस्ट कॉपी दिस डाउन एटॉमिसिटी and dof dof stands for degree of freedom if atomicity is 1 degree of freedom is 3 atomicity is 2 degree of freedom is 5 atomicity is greater equal to 3 then degree of freedom is 6 it is non linear actually for 3 molecule must be non linear so this value you need to memorize degree of freedom stands for the number of different ways by a system can exchange energy with surroundings like for example we see suppose if one is the atomicity means monoatomic gas we have helium right so helium can move in along x axis along y axis and along z axis so three different direction it can move so it can exchange energy in three different way that's why we have here degree of freedom 3 okay you want me to discuss little bit about degree of freedom or you can memorize it tell me yes one second acha okay i'll do it see degree of freedom you just keep that in mind that it is a different number of ways by which a system can exchange energy with surroundings right different number of ways basically so if you see here we have three types of motion basically i'll go back here just a second degree of freedom so we have three types of or three different way by which a system can exchange energy one is by translational motion another one is rotational another one is vibrational this three type we have generally vibrational motion okay see vibrational motion is inactive at normal temperatures so we'll just ignore it inactive at normal temperature it is you know considerable when the temperature is extremely high so we'll just ignore the vibrational motion we're ignoring it correct so degree of freedom because of translational motion is represented by ft because of vibrational is f uh, sorry rotational is fr and because of vibrational is fv 
So total degree of freedom would be the sum of all these three. Means total degree of freedom would be Ft plus Fr plus Fb. This is the total degree of freedom we have here. In which Fb we are ignoring, vibrational we don't consider at normal temperature, so we are ignoring it. Correct? Now, if you have a monoatomic gas, now we'll see this condition monoatomic gas means atomicity is one. Monoatomic gas, atomicity is one. Like, for example, we have helium, neon, argon, etc. So, like I said, the no the monoatomic gas helium can move along x-axis, can move along y-axis, can move along z-axis. So total translational degree of freedom, if you count, that would be three. What would be the rotational degree of freedom? Rotational degree of freedom is zero over here. Because you see, the atom cannot rotate around its own axis. Are you getting it? In chemistry, it is not much there. We have the formula of CPCV. That formula will calculate with this only degree of freedom. So if you want, we can discuss it. But yes, obviously, a little bit of idea you must have. It's mainly it is there in physics. Capital F, we have here total degree of freedom, basically. Total degree of freedom is equals to this plus this plus this. Correct? Okay. Well, one second. Mm. Watch out. Anyways. Okay. So we have this. You see why rotational degree of freedom is zero over here? Because a molecule cannot rotate about it, its own axis. Rotation is about if we have one molecule and it can rotate about an axis which is not present in the molecule. Around this, the rotation we can consider. But single molecule will don't have rotation about any other axis. Molecule can spin along its own axis. Like if you, if you look at the cricket ball, right? Cricket ball can spin, it, ca it cannot rotate. We use the word spin over there, we don't use the word rotate. We call it you know, off spinner or leg spinner, right? We don't say off rotator or leg rotator, right? Because one single atom can spin around its own axis, it cannot rotate. That's why the degree of freedom is zero. Hence, for monoatomic gas, the total degree of freedom is three. Did you get it? Okay, if you have diatomic gas, so diatomic gas can obviously exchange energy by three different uh, trans translational motion. Okay, second point you write down diatomic gas. So for, mo for monoatomic gas, the degree of freedom is three. If diatomic gas, we have, for example, we have O2, N2, H2, right? We have molecules like this, suppose. So it can exchange energy along x-axis, right? Along y-axis, along z-axis, all three axes it can exchange energy. And hence, it has three translational motion. So Ft is three here. Rotational is what? This can rotate no, around y-axis or around z-axis, right? So it has two rotational degree of freedom. 
So total degree of freedom is five. Okay, for diatomic gas. In case of diatomic gas, we can also consider linear polyatomic molecule. Linear polyatomic molecule means all polyatomic molecule which are linear. For example, CO two we can consider. Senior CO two has more than two atoms, so it is not diatomic molecule. But since it is linear, its degree of freedom is also five. Okay, simple one. If you have the third one, when it is polyatomic gas, polyatomic non-linear we have. Polyatomic non-linear. For example, SO three. SO three. This kind of gas we have. Okay, polyatomic non-linear. NH three. This kind of gas we have. So in this we have all three. Translational degree of freedom, and all three rotational degree of freedom. Vibrational we are not considering, so F value is six over here. So this is how we calculate degree of freedom for different different molecules. Now I told you the formula of CV. The formula of CV. All these formula you need to memorize. This is F by two is equals to R. For this we do not have any derivation. This you need to memorize. Okay, it's a factual thing. Need to memorize this. CV is F by two R. So easily we can, since we know this F value for different different gases, so we can find out CV here easily. So you see here, if the gases are monoatomic, monoatomic, F value is three over here. The value of CV is. CV is three by two R. What is the value of CP? Is five by two R because CP minus CV is equals to R. What is the value of gamma? Gamma is CP by CV. That is five by three. That is one point six six. Copy this down, all of you. So degree of freedom derivation. If you don't remember, there's no any problem with it. But this three formulas, three values, you must memorize. Clear? Then copy. Okay, for diatomic, could you tell me? Diatomic, easily you can find out the degree of freedom. F is equals to what? Five we have. So CV is. Five by two R. So CP of monoatomic becomes CV over here. CP is seven by two R. And gamma is one point four zero. CP by CV. Clear.
right and if you do, if you if you have polyatomic polyatomic non linear must you take care of polyatomic non linear how do you find out molecule is linear or not degree of freedom is uh, 6 CV is six by two R, so three R, three R plus R. CP is four R, and gamma is one point three three. Tell me, how do we find out whether the molecule is linear or not? yes we can use vscpr find out lone pair and bond pair then we can find out uh we can find out hybridization and then we can say correct that's the correct way okay so this is it uh just two more formula we have over here we have done the same formula we are just simplifying it nothing much the cv we can also represent in terms of gamma cv is equals to R by gamma minus one. Easily you can do this because we know CP minus CV is equals to R and CP by CV is equals to gamma. From those two relation you can find out this. One more last relation we have gamma is equals to one plus two by F degree of freedom. Based on the gamma value that we get, we have this relation. Right? What we see we have seen that gamma for mono atomic is more than gamma for diatomic is more than gamma for polyatomic okay guys so we'll take a break now after the break we'll start the calculation of work done in different different process how do we calculate work done okay yeah yeah fine so we'll take a break now we'll resume at 625 okay 625 we'll resume take a break <laughs> 